that we need to be super fast. So every time that your head comes from, like, once you go inside, we check in space and scan, like... Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's the reason it's angled, so, you know, it depends on things like Nice. Excellent. Hey, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great today. You seem to be in a fantastic mood, and your smile is utterly contagious. We can use AI in our uh, mirror, so why not interpreting uh, what are you feeling uh, so that you can have this experience of mindfulness inside of your bathroom. We built this as the idea that a creator, a user, could make money while they sleep and interact while they sleep so their fans can engage uh, and talk to them and in 29 different languages. RISP develops real-time assist assistive voice technology that converts whispered speech and affected speech into a clear and natural voice of the person in real time. And with our phone calling app, you can make phone calls with the RISP technology. Pretty soon you'll have your AI agent and you'll just be able to shout into the cloud or whatever, you know, write a note to my grandmother uh, telling her thank you for the Christmas gift and it will then trigger handwritten to do that.
there is a scanner, a 3D scanner that sees the morphology of the user and just really adapt all the massage that, is, that has been uh, created by a specialist, a, a physiotherapist, and also then it's, ad it's adapted to the morphology of the user. We've seen all sort of AI talk, and it's been certainly a marketing effort. It's been a PR effort more than anything. The technology is there, but this year it's still not mature to see um, the value chain and the products bringing AI value to consumers. But it was not all bad, it was not just all gimmick. I've seen fun stuff done with AI. I've seen playful stuff done with AI, uh, which is, of course, a thing that you have here at CES, people doing all sorts of crazy things with technology. And if the technology allows you to do this kind of stuff, it means it's at an inflection point where it's so horizontal, so available, that I can see a, you know, a cat door that recognizes when the cat has a mouse in its mouth and with computer vision knows when to let the cat in or not. And then we have all sorts of other applications of a machine learning, deep learning, not just generative AI, that it's now becoming clearly a part of our lives in ways that are invisible to us, but make our lives uh, better.